Hello there friends and welcome. As my first build guide for Deadfire, I really want to start with the Ascendant Cypher, a class so powerful that it can eventually achieve infinite spell casting through a very easy to do looping combo. Even at the early game, you will already be able to do quite a lot of spell spamming and eventually even allow all of your allies to regenerate spells including level 9 spells and also class resources. You have a lot of spells for both area of effect damage, great debuffs, including charm and dominate, and of course extreme single target damage as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so the first thing is race. You actually have, I'd say, around three choices here. First, you can go with Nature Godlike. They are very powerful for any caster class because of their unique Wellspring of Life ability. Basically a passive that increases their power level by one whenever they are buffed with any inspiration. It's very easy to get buffs on your character, especially the Cleric Accuracy buffs, which you always want. Second, we have Hearth Orlan. A great class for any ranged character, including spellcasters that are often far away. So their special minor threat, ratio passive, basically lets them convert 10% of their hits into automatic criticals, so long as they attack an enemy, including with spells and abilities, that is also threatened by a teammate, most likely your tank. Critical hits not only enhance your damage, including that of spells, but also the duration of buffs and debuffs, so very useful. I'd say if you want, like, to min max, your character, these two are the best races, however, as usual I really like going with humans. I have completed many runs, including Iron Man runs with humans, all on Path of the Damned of course. And if you don't like humans, don't be afraid of picking any other race you want, it's just that Nature Godlike and the Hearth Orlern are the best. Now as far as single or multi-class, you absolutely want to go single classed. If you've watched my best cypher spells video, then you know cyphers have an extremely powerful level 8 spell, Time Parasite. Plus, as an Ascendant, we'll get to spam spells infinitely, so the faster you get access to the powerful spells, the better. Remember, multi-classes take a lot longer to learn spells, and they are limited only to level 7 ones. And of course, as far as class, we are going with Cypher, and then Ascendant. The main special power of Ascendant is that whenever you reach max focus, your character will enter the Ascended status. The duration starts around 20 seconds or so, but can be increased a lot by having higher intelligence. You also get an increase to power level, but most importantly, like I said, your power's focus cost while under this will be reduced to zero, which means you can spam as many spells as you want, it's really that powerful. And also what makes it my favorite class and build in the whole game. You can achieve max focus with a Cypher super quickly and even at the early game, so here's how it goes. The easiest way to generate max focus early game with just a single action is by equipping a rod, even a normal unenchanted rod will do. This is because of their weapon ability Blast. Be sure to start battle inside stealth with all your party members, including your tank, then send your tank straight ahead, he'll most likely soon be detected, which is fine, he's there to tank after all. Now note this battle has started, but our characters are still under stealth, so what you want to do is wait for the enemies together. Because of Blast, our normal rod attack will hit not only the main target, but also all enemies surrounding it. This results in a massive focus generation. Be sure to pick the target that lets you hit most enemies. And there we go, we already got max focus from all of the enemies we hit here. And because of the stealth bonus, we can immediately proceed to cast a spell. So you not only gain full focus, you cast your spell right after without recovery time. You'll most likely be just spamming Soul Shock after that to thin the enemy packs until you have only a few left for Mind Blades. Early on you have around 20 seconds of maximum spell spamage. The second and the best way to get maximum focus from the start of combat is the extremely overpowered Kitchen Stuff Blunderbuss. The main reason is the very unique Thunderous Report weapon ability. For starters, it is actually once per encounter. Unlike most weapon and gear abilities that are just per rest, this can be spammed at the start of every battle. Second, and here's the most amazing part, when you cast this, it will unleash an area of effect that's quite big, as you can see here, usually enough to hit all of the enemies, and especially amazing for Path of the Damned, where enemy packs tend to be numerous. Anyways, the damage is great, targets both burn and crush, 
will push the enemies a bit and even inflict dazed. Because of how OP the damage is and the fact this hits lots of enemies, with just a single cast of this, you will pretty much always have max focus. Getting it is also somewhat simple, but I would recommend you only do this at the very least at level 7 if you have pure classes. It comes at the end of the Cornet Skull quest from Dario the Lean. You'll have to do some battles in the Undercity area, which can be tough on Path of the Damned, that's why I recommend you only do it at level 7 plus. For your first powers, be sure to go with Soul Shock, but if you prefer a more crowd control character, pick Whisper of Treason. I personally prefer Soul Shock because of the because it is your best area of effect ability, and on Path of the Damned, enemy packs are increasing number. As far as attributes, we absolutely want max intellect, max might. When it comes to spell damage, there aren't really many ways of increasing it besides might. That's why it's so important for spellcasters. You can without a doubt dump constitution to just 3. This is a ranged character, so honestly, you'll never be in any danger. And for when the enemies are attacking you, you'll have a lot of ways to defend yourself with help from your allies and I'll soon post a guide covering the best party members story ones that is. Anyways, Resolve is also another classic dump stat, it doesn't really matter at all. Perception, the higher your perception, the better your accuracy, and accuracy is great well first so you don't miss on your initial attack to max your focus, and second it also works for spells even. And lastly, 17 or 18 dexterity because it grants a big bonus to action speed. The background is really up to you, for example if you want to get 18 dexterity just speak that fire archipelago. So now we have 18 on our main stats. As far as your background, it also doesn't really matter that much. I like Raider if you went with archipelago because we have a bonus to stealth and stealth will be one of our main skills. One athletics is also decent for the hit points recovery ability you get per encounter. As far as weapon proficiency, the most important one at the early game is to go with Rod, as I've already explained, to easily get max focus even at the early levels. For a secondary proficiency, it doesn't really matter because, like I said, you'll just be using rods. You can go with Hunting Bow for the rapid shot ability. Now that we are at the end of character creation, let us cover how to level up our Ascendant Cypher for maximum efficiency. After you reach level 2, first we have skill points. Honestly, the most important skill for this character is Stealth. Like I said before, when you combine stealth with rod attacks or the kitchen stuff thunderous rapport attack, honestly any weapon attack really, you'll get your attack and then right after that immediately cast a spell without recovery time. As far as a passive skill, it really is up to you. I like to go with bluff because it is a cypher class skill and often using dialogue. Anyways, now let's really get to the meat of the build. So we already have Soul Shock at level 1. And for level 2, absolutely be sure to go with Penetrating Visions, because it increases your penetration with all Cypher spells, including Soul Shock. The higher your penetration, the higher your chances of inflicting full damage upon the enemy, no matter their armor rating, and enemies on Path of the Dam tend to have higher armor rating. For level 2, you absolutely want Draining Whip. It gives you an extra 50% to focus gain, which of course, highly increases our chances of getting max focus after our first action, so we can spam our spells during ascension. Second, Mind Blades. Like I said in my spell guide, this will bounce back and forth between enemies, and it's the ideal spell for when you have only 2-3 to three targets left. Meanwhile, if you have a lot of enemies left, use Soul Shock instead. For level 4, pick 2-handed style, this will increase your damage with rod, bows, and later on your thunderous weapon from the kitchen stuff blunderbuss. Of course, the more damage, the more focus will generate. You can also go with Recall Agony, but I would save this for later, as this is a spell that is only truly good against bosses and very tough foes. Not much use to it during the very early game. For another weapon proficiency, pick the Arquebus. Only so we can use the ranged Arquebus called the Red Hand, for a bonus to damage and also the fact it fires two shots at once. So if you don't want to use rods, you can use this instead until you get the kitchen stuff blunderbuss. For your first level 3 spell, I would pick Secret Horrors. The combination of Frightened plus Sickened as a decent area of effect can help a lot. However, if you have a wizard, once they reach level 9 for Enervating Terror, I would respect our Cypher out of this. Also be sure to pick Hammering Thoughts which just like penetrating visions increases your penetration except with weapons. And as usual, the more damage and penetration we have with our weapon, 
the higher the chances of getting max focus during our first attack. Level 6 is when I would pick Recall Agony. You'll be at Nekitaka and at this point you start facing some tough bosses. But if you like to charm enemies, you can also pick Puppet Master. For level 7, if you don't have a druid that can cast Nature's Bomb, then pick Pain Block to easily buff your tanks with Robust. And if you don't have a wizard, also be sure to pick Body Attunement instead of Exposed Vulnerabilities. Because I often go with druids, I like to pick Iron Will at this level instead. It's a pretty nice boost to your will, which is your main weakness as a Cypher because enemies can cast Arcane Dampener to dispel your buffs, and it is targeted against will. Besides that, Combat Focus to give you concentration at the start of combat. Concentration is very important because it prevents your character from being disrupted when taking damage and losing their actions such as spellcasting for that round. For level 8, I would pick Greater Focus. This is just so you have a higher starting focus, so that your character can still do something if you don't manage to max your focus out in your first action. Weapon proficiencies from here onwards don't really matter, you can pick anything you want. For level 9, the choices are simple. Borrowed Instinct, and then Rapid Casting, to enhance your action speed with spells. This will later on stack with Time Parasite, so quite powerful. For level 10, I would pick Uncanny Luck. The extra critical conversion can be pretty nice when you consider our spells are mostly area of effect, like Soul Shock and soon Amplified Wave. 5% resistance can also help, but you can't really rely on it. For level 11, it's also very simple. Amplified Wave, the best area of effect cipher spell, and of course Disintegration, the ultimate damage over time spell in the game. For level 12, be sure to go with the Empty Soul, which increases the accuracy of all our will spells, such as Recall Agony and Borrowed Instinct. An extra plus 10 really matters a lot. At level 13, we gain a massive boosting power, as this is when you can finally pick Ancestor's Memory. With this spell, you can just loop your Ascended buff into Infinity. To put it simply, have your Cypher cast Ancestor's Memory on a Priest. Then the Priest can simply use Salvation of Time to indefinitely extend any buff your party has, including Ascension. Because of the brilliant inspiration, your Priest will soon regain the slot you use to cast Salvation of Time, so you can truly keep this on a loop, going forever and ever. Besides that, go with Improved Critical to increase our critical damage. For level 14, I would pick Far Casting, just to increase our range by quite a nice amount. For level 15, pick Spell Resistance. Enemy spells are one of the biggest threats against our character, but 10% resistance can be quite useful, especially when you combine it with Shotis Lantern, that can add up to 11%. For level 16, the choice is a given, Time Parasite to truly increase our action speed by massive amounts, thus letting us cast spells lightning fast. Besides that, I would go with tough just in case. It can actually contribute quite a lot of health to you because health gains aren't that high by level up in dead fire, and of course we have pretty low constitution. For level 17, I would pick Echoing Horror, which makes enemies frightened once we kill them for an area of effect. Frightened is a pretty nasty debuff, and since we get to do it for free, why not? For level 18, well, I would pick Keen Mind, although it won't really matter that much since we can max our focus with just one tenderous report from our kitchen stuff weapon. I don't really care much for the Empower line with a Cypher, because we do have infinite spells anyways. What you can do is instead of picking Keen Mind, at the very least pick Potent and Power for an increase to damage if you like to use Empower. Now at last we are at level 19 with our level 9 spells. Be sure to pick first Driving Echoes for the massive penetration boost, and then Prestige for an extra power level. As for level 20, I would go with Shared Nightmare. It's one of the most unique passives in that it increases your area of effect by absurd amounts, especially since we already have higher focus from being an Ascendant Cypher. With this, your Amplified Wave will truly hit the entire screen, no matter what. Alright. So now let's get into gear for our Ascendant Cypher. When it comes to Helmet, unless you are a nature god like, I prefer the ones that increase intelligence, such as Heaven's Cacophony, which you can buy right at a shopkeeper from the docks at Neketaka. Plus, Yuju Intellect is quite powerful. Remember that some of the gear bonuses will stack, including bonuses to attributes. Plus, this also comes with the Shout of Hosts ability and Avenging Storm as well, so a very stacked helmet. For the necklace, the third eye is my favorite as it makes 10% of your hits become criticals with spells. 
However, this is pretty late game from the Forgotten Sanctum DLC only. Besides that, the Strand of Favor, which grants more intellect and most importantly, plus 10% beneficial effect duration, which is great for increasing our Ascendant duration. Otherwise, you also have the Bubbles of the Finn for the Crude and Curious buff that grants you an aura that enhances damage by 3%, including spell damage. When it comes to armor, be sure to go with ropes. We want as little recovery time as possible. There are plenty of decent ropes in the game. I like the Effigy's Husk, for example, that has pretty decent armor rating from the Strange Ladder effect against slashing. Most importantly, immunity to Might afflictions, which target Fortitude, our lowest saving throw. The Scan's Hatred ability doesn't really matter, but you can also go with Spider Silk Robe for immunity to poison and dexterity afflictions, and even the Humidity Robes for 10% chance to ignore slashing or piercing attacks. Now when it comes to rings, first we have Kuaru's Prize, just for the plus 5% extra boost with spells, and of course plus 1 intellect, and also the Ring of Prosperity's fortune. Basically the higher your money, I believe this caps out at like 200,000 gold, which isn't really that high to get in that fire, but each money threshold gives you an increasing bonus, ultimately becoming 50% hits to critical conversion, quite powerful. You can buy this from the deck of many things ship that you can find traveling all over the world map. When it comes to boots, Vithrax Silk Slippers for the 5% chance to recast spells. This is also from Forgotten Sanctum. But there are some other nice boots in the game, like Boots of Stealth and the Boots of Stone for resistance to might afflictions and plus one dexterity and so on. Now for Cloak, I really like the Shroud of the Phantasm. Most importantly, the Mystical Celerity passive, that grants you plus 10% action speed with spells whenever you are affected by a Mind Inspiration. This comes from the area called Berkana's Observatory, the same place you'll fight a certain Lich later on. For the early game, you can also go with cloaks that increase your saving throws, or grant bonuses to important stats like Intellect. When it comes to gloves, focus on the ones that grant and increase to Might, such as Wedika's Strangling Grasp but you can also go with the normal gauntlets of Ogre Might. Lastly for a belt, the Sash of Judgment, because it grants us an increase to damage against enemies above 50% health, which is great for, you know, maximizing our focus right at the goal. You do have a penalty of receiving more damage as well, but this doesn't really matter. You can also buy this from the Deck of Many Things ship. Lastly, the pet slot is very important. Milks is my favorite for the extra bonus to intellect, and the priceless hit to critical conversion with spells of 5%, which does stack with a lot of other stuff. You can buy this kitten from the pet vendor at Serpent's Crown, the palace district in Neketaka, so pretty easy to get to. Oh, I almost forgot. For a ring slot, you can also go with Ring of Overseeing later on to increase your area of effect. They even stack with one another if you have two. Lastly, we have the weapon section. Kitchen stove, as I explained before, is the ultimate weapon for our cipher. But besides that, be sure to dual wield it with Griffin's Blade. We aren't really going to attack with this, it's just for the very rare passive that grants a boost to spell damage by 10%. And like I said, boosts to spell damage tend to be pretty rare besides Might. And don't forget the Red Hand Arquebus for before you get the kitchen stove. Alright friends, so this was it from my Cypher Ascendant guide. I'll soon be posting other builds for that fire. Be sure to comment down below if you think I missed on something Cypher related. As usual, please remember to subscribe and like this video to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends.